Hello, cruel world, and welcome to another episode of I Love This, You Should Too. I am one of your hosts, Indy Three Shirts Randall, <laughs> and with me is my lovely co host, Samantha Giant Pants Hees. <laughs> I like how I got the giant pants. <laughs> <laughs> and we here at I Love This You Should Too are proud members of the Alberta Podcast Network, which is locally grown and community supported. If you've never listened before, what an episode to come Woo! into. <laughs> so we take turns bringing movies to the other person, something they normally wouldn't have seen or wanted to see. And Samantha got me to watch the uh, dance classic. Should we say? The 2006 dance classic. The 2006 dance classic. Step Up. I almost forgot the name of it, actually. Say, were you waiting for me to say it? Because I didn't realize we were going back and forth. <laughs> so, Indy, you had never seen this movie before. No. Did you love it? Well, I think I can review this movie very simply. It's as enjoyable as it is terrible. Huh. Okay. So quite. Yeah, it's quite enjoyable. <laughs> but Sounds it's like quite, quite terrible. terrible. Uh, you somehow hadn't seen Step Up? Somehow I had It was your pick, but you hadn't seen it before. It, it was one of those, I feel like I probably should have seen this movie already, but I haven't. So let's watch it kind of movie picks. Mm -hmm. So I saw it for the first time with you seeing it for the first time. And uh, I have some questions that we'll get to later in the podcast, but uh, overall, I liked it a lot. You see why this movie launched a franchise and a career. Yes. Yeah. I, uh, I can see. I can see why. It wasn't as like hokey and silly as I thought it was going to be. Wasn't it? Yeah. I guess you thought it was going to be really bad. I thought it was going to be really bad, which is why I'd never seen it. Because I thought it was like, ugh, step up. Seems dumb. Really? Lots of, I thought like, you would have been like, oh, I can't wait to see Step Up. It looks like the best. No. And so I, I came at this in like a completely like research mode because I was like, okay, hey, well, this is something I need to see as like someone who danced for a lot of years of her life. I'm glad I saw it. I thought it was super fun and I enjoyed it more than I thought I would. We did have a good time watching we it. Did. A great time watching we it. We did. However, we were in gr great moods. Yeah. We may have been a little drunk. I think we were, yeah. <laughs> we rewatched much of it right now to kind of compile our to notes yeah. and just kind of remember right before recording. It looked much worse. It did. I think it's situational again. Yeah. I think if you're ready to have a good time, yeah. you might enjoy this movie. If you want to analyze it, oh, you're going to hate it. <laughs> I think... The first time I watched it, I might have loved it. And now you've come down a little? To, like, I like it a lot. Okay. But I don't know if I can love it. It It's silly. But not, like, fun silly. No. It's kind of poorly done silly. Yeah, but it was still super fun to watch. Yeah, yeah. All right, so let's get into the 2006 dance classic dance that we both classic. agreed on now. Uh, step up. But before we do that, let's thank our... First sponsor of the episode, and that is Park Power, your friendly local utilities provider in Alberta, offering internet, electricity, and natural gas with low rates, awesome service, and profit sharing with local charities. Because in Alberta, you get to choose who you buy your electricity, internet, and natural gas from. And if you choose Park Power, you are choosing a positive local business. Plus, Park Power shares its profits with non-for-profits like CKUA Radio, the Boys and Girls Club, the Canadian Parks and Wilderness Society, and others. And we love local here at the Alberta Podcast Network, so it's a great fit. So you can learn more at parkpower.ca. All right. Well, let's get into it. So this movie starts off uh, very appropriately by cutting back and forth between ballet dancing and, I don't know, like hip hop dancing? Is street that what that is? dancing? Street dancing. Is street dancing like a thing? I would ask the person who uh, took dance lessons and watches dance movies. Mm. Is street dancing a thing? I don't know. Are you talking about like b-boying? Because that's a thing. And that's a thing. Okay. I know about that. But like, 
at this point, not nearly as much because really the early 90s was the drop off and kind of kind of the end of the b-boy and then they now that like dance crews are a thing again it's come back but. right yeah i uh i don't know much about that kind of style of dance i was very kind of insulated in my little ballet bubble oh well maybe i'll have to come and disrupt your world with my break dancing skills and then somehow do you have break dancing skills no i do not <laughs> i got really excited there i have break dancing knowledge okay i have never break dance break danced <laughs> no, that's, that's correct. Broke danced. Broke danced. Mm-hmm. Um, I have also never be boyed. Okay. <laughs> Um, so I'm not, I'm not knowledgeable. I think you're going to have to carry that knowledge for us. All right. <laughs> well, Channing Tatum's going to carry it Channing for Tatum, us. Channing Tatum, yes. And we get introduced to him at a party where they go, hey guys, where's Tyler? Where do you think he is? No. Because d- And everyone shrugs really large. <laughs> because he's always dancing. He just yeah. loves to dance. So much dancing in very baggy clothes happens in this oh, movie. Oh, how yeah. does he move? Right? But he has a tiny tank top on. So and he, I, he somehow manages to keep all of his clothes like affixed to his body as yeah, well. Yeah, like, I am uh, impressed that his pants aren't falling off all the time. I can't go to the mall without a belt. Never yeah. mind like... like I, I wore some, I gotta say, I wore some big pants. You wore some big pants? When I was a teenager. I can imagine. And, uh, yeah, I wouldn't be doing those things. In no, it. he's like flipping himself upside down and he's like really shaking it. And he's really shaking it. You'd think that those pants would just be on the ground. Yeah. But he must have some sort of like crazy belt contraption. He's looking at him like a fool with his pants on the ground. Is that a thing? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he's there. He's dancing. He's dancing with his girl. And of course, the guy pulls a gun on him. He's like, hey, man, that's my girl. As you do. Yeah. <laughs> and we are also introduced to him being the only white person. Ever. <laughs> in his group of yes. friends. And they bring attention to that, and they say, like, I think you're uh, overcompensating because you're the only white person. <laughs> and I don't, is that, like, the writer just being like, yeah, that's what I'm doing here? Is that a thing? You've said, is that a thing a lot? What are you referring to in this Sorry, case? Sorry, no. In this case, I'm like, is he overcompensating? Like, what is he overcompensating for because he's white? Oh, he's trying to prove himself. Oh, okay. To, like, fit in with the other guys. I uh, Yeah, I kind of figured. Okay. Okay, I'm with you. No, I just needed, <laughs> I just had a question. <laughs> And then they leave the party after someone pulls a gun and uh, we get introduced to these three friends being uh, Tyler, Channing Tatum, and Mac, his friend, and Skinny, Mac's little brother. Aww. And they cover all sizes of people between the three of them. <laughs> they are. Them walking down the street. I couldn't figure out how tall anyone was. We had to look it up. We had to look up how tall Channing Tatum was. Yeah, we was needed a basis. To give, like, give us the middle line. Because I was like, I thought Channing Tatum was like a lot taller for some reason. So then I thought Mac must be seven foot five while Skinny is about four ten. Yeah. It was how it seems. so weird. That whole, like, you just couldn't get reference on who was what height. Mm-hmm. And, like, is Channing Tatum giant or is he really short? Yeah. Turns out he's, like, my height and Mac is just tall and skinny is small. Yeah. So we have a small, medium, large going on. A small, on. medium, large going on. Yeah. yeah, I like that. <laughs> I like how friend groups have a small, medium, large. <laughs> And this group of friends, they can't go about more than about two seconds without throwing something or pushing each other. There's so much jostling happening here. Yeah, his um, full name is Tyler Jocelyn Gage because he's always <laughs> jostling people. Oh, man. And they're like giggling and pushing each other. Constantly. They're just like, hey, be more teen boy. And they, they're like, we kind of are. We know how to do it. And they're like, yeah. no, no, more. No, no, more. more. Turn it up. And also, none of you have been teens in like 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> They were supposed to all be in high school? Yeah. I believe Skinny. Yeah, Skinny looks like he could be in like grade 10 or grade 11. But Tyler and Mac both look like they're like 25. Yes. And in all of their throwing stuff, they break a window. And rather than running away as you break a window, they say like, hey, let's crawl through that broken glass. And he drags himself. I don't know know. how he doesn't disembowel himself. And he's wearing like a t-shirt. Well, he's, to be fair, he's probably wearing at least three t-shirts. Okay, well then he's... Everyone (laughs) wears many shirts. Then glass can't touch him. (laughs) But yeah, he like belly slides through the window and like flips himself onto like whatever's underneath him. And they go, no, it's cool. It's a school. So it's fine that we broke in. 
And everyone's like, oh, it's an art school. Let's go smash everything. Yeah. And they're just, just the worst. And for no reason, they're kind of just like Robin Williams it up. Yeah. You know, they're just always on going, how about this? How about this? Look, I'm doing this. And it's yeah. just, it's too much. It's like manic almost. Yes. They're like, ee smash, 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 smash. <laughs> That's exactly how it was. And you out there couldn't see it, but Samantha was doing a bunch of smashing and waving. arm motions. Yeah. And- Oh, and now she's like a scary monster? <laughs> I don't know what that was. I think it was a mummy. Um, we also learn that guys in tank tops, not cool. Unless it's Channing Tatum. And yeah. He's, he's making his buddies watch him dance on the hood of a car. Yeah, Skinny says like, oh yeah, those guys look good. And everyone's like, oh, you're gay. Don't touch me. Because that's like yeah. teenage boys, I guess. Skinny's like, there's a muscular man. Like he clearly works hard. And uh, but then they have no problem just sitting back and watching Shining Datum dance for them for hours <laughs> on the hood of the car. Yeah, yeah, in, in a tank top. In a tank top, which was a real uh, issue of contention earlier in the yes. movie. Yes, but that comes later. Uh, they get caught, and Channing Tatum is all noble and says, go on without me, and takes the fall and doesn't rat out his friends, and then ends up getting 200 hours of community service, which he will serve at the school that he just smashed up. Which he becomes a janitor at. Yeah, and I kind of love uh, the introduction to the janitor. I wish we got to see more. Yeah, him. I want to know more about the janitor yeah. who just like takes in delinquents. And he has a foster family who he just hates. And it's like, oh, you're the worst. You're just doing it for the paycheck. Yeah. But his mom's like, okay, I'm going to make you dinner. Just wait. And he's like, no, I'm not hungry because you guys are the worst. Yeah. She seems very nice. And she like buys fun cereal. Yeah. He has two foster siblings who yeah. like clearly look up to him mm-hmm. and are like, you're the best. And he's like, I don't have time for you. I just need to dance. Yeah. Watching this movie, if I didn't know, because... He learned to dance for this movie, or he wasn't a dancer first. No, he was like a sports person. Oh, was he? Yeah, he he um had a football scholarship, which he turned down to act. Oh wow, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, but uh, this performance seems like they needed someone who could dance, and rather than training an actor to dance, mm-hmm. they found a dancer and just like, okay, this is better than nothing. Oh, he was a stripper. Okay. Um, at a nightclub when he uh, turned down his scholarship, he became a roofer and an actor and became a stripper at a nightclub under the name Chan Crawford. Chan Crawford. Um, and then he told an Australian newspaper that he wanted to make a movie about his experience as a stripper. And that's what led to Magic Mike. All right. Uh, but what I'm saying is he's a bad actor in this. He is a bad actor in this. And I've gone on the record. I like Channing Tatum. I yeah. think he's he's quite good, especially in good. recent stuff. But he is bad in this. And he had to come into his own. And you could say, like, it's all right that he's not a great actor. He should at least be fun and have some sort of charisma. And yeah. he has neither in this movie, no. which was the most surprising and most disappointing part of the movie, I think. I agree, because he is like he's very charming in a lot of the things I've seen him in. Yeah, definitely. Even when he's being more silly or comedic or whatever, he's very charming and very like... He's engaging and charismatic. Yeah. Even if you don't like him, I think you probably have to admit at least a little bit of that, but he doesn't bring any of that into no. this movie. And now he's funny, too. Like, he's... Yeah. He's like a very good comedic actor. I agree. And he gets there and everyone's like, oh, who's the sexy janitor? Oh, love a man in uniform. <laughs> but no, and they say like, oh, he's not a janitor. He's the one who destroyed our school. And based on hearing that, the best friend character is like, oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> Why mm. would you like that? Love some janitor. No offense to anybody who's a janitor, but but it's an odd stance to take on someone who like destroyed your school that you love a man in uniform and the uniform being giant coveralls <laughs> yeah those might be the most form-fitting fitting things he wears all yeah movie. probably actually <laughs> and then he does that scene where he's dancing in the parking lot for his best friends you know just like broing out just as putting you on do. a dance putting on a dance show for yeah, your bros i do that and nora the dancer um main character she is watching from a window and is like, does that classic like move away from the window when someone looks up and sees you? Yeah. <gasps> so shocked that he saw me watching from this window that's like 
very close to where he is. Again, no one could see the actions you just did, but I'm sure they could figure yeah, it out. Yeah, I'm sure you could figure it out. And then we get a scene of them playing basketball because that's a thing they do as well. It's weird that they include so much basketball in this movie because it has like kind of no, no significance to anything in the plot. Because we'll get there later when he becomes a dancer, but how does he have the time? Yeah. He goes to school, apparently. We never see him actually no, do that. No, apparently he goes to school until 2 p.m. though. Yeah. That's a, that's a nice school. Yeah. I hope I do. And plays basketball for money and takes dance classes and is working to be this dancer and probably studied dance somewhere because, or unless he just came up with all of this on his own. I think the streets taught him to dance. But who? He doesn't dance with anyone. No. And this is like pre-YouTube, I think, right? I assume so. I don't think there's as much on the internet as there is now. Yeah. He's definitely not taking YouTube lessons. And does he, I guess he doesn't, doesn't have to be a janitor anymore, but he's, he's doing a lot. Yeah, I don't know what, I, I want to see a breakdown of his schedule for the day. Because <laughs> he's, yeah, he's not janitoring anymore. His community service ends up being Nora's partner. Yeah, well, let's get to that because Nora's partner says, oh, I sprained my ankle. You're going to have to do it on your own or find someone else. And she says, well, I can't do it on my own. It's way too close to change it now. Yeah, I can't. Keep that in mind so because she's going to change it every 30 seconds after yeah. this. So she can't do it on her own. So luckily, she's in a school where everyone is an amazing dancer. And mm -hmm. all she requires from them is to lift her once. One lift. No one can do it. And in the opening credits, there's a scene where there is a partner in class. Well, literally so everyone can do literally that. literally learning to lift their partner. So they should be able to do this. Yeah. Also, if you're in 12th grade and you've been studying dance this entire time, chances are you could do it. Yeah. Yeah, I really think so. All of these dancers are terrible. Well, they, they clearly learned nothing in their 12 years of dance. And Channing Tatum is there at the auditions and laughs and says, I can do that. And then he does because it's, it's one lift. Probably not that hard. No. And she weighs like 85 pounds. Well, and he's got all those clothes on to weigh him down so he doesn't fall over. Yeah, like everyone else does. Yeah, yeah. But she is like a jerk to all these people who are auditioning for her, basically, because she's like, ugh, you're done. Bye. Ugh, thanks for coming out. Bye. <laughs> and they just like continuously dismisses them with like eye rolls and just looks like upset. I'm kind of on her side because no one can do one simple move <laughs> that they've been studying for many years. I just think like if someone comes to your audition to help you out, mm -hmm. you should just be like a little nicer to them. I guess. She takes things too seriously though. Remember? That's her thing. Oh, right. She takes She's, things very She knows serious. nothing but dance and refuses to go to an Ivy League college. Yeah. They work out a system where he doesn't have to do community service or the janitor part. And because he was terrible at it anyway, he, he only went to the most busy places. Yeah. Like when everyone was coming into a class to sit down, he's like, okay, this is when I'm going to like move your chairs. You can try and vacuum. Yeah. Yeah. He's very And then like bump it. into stuff as you're trying to set up. It's weird. Terrible <laughs> custodial work from We him. said while we were watching it the first time, like, is there not some sort of like schedule for cleaning as well? Like yeah. this room will be empty at this time. So please clean it. <laughs> or just look and don't go where everyone is. Exactly. That's pretty easy. Yeah, that's, that seems simple. But he gets to do dance instead with Nora. And at their first practice, he's wearing the biggest shirts and pants ever and just dances in socks. Or I guess he dances in pants because his pants go over his feet. Yeah, there's like... Built-in dance shoes. <laughs> Denim dance shoes. Yeah. And he's just like such a fucking dick. He is a dick. This whole most of 90% of this movie, he's just like the shittiest person. <laughs> and he just won't use words. No. He's like, no, I don't want to. Oh, no. That's what he does for most of this movie. I think this is why people think Channing Tatum is like a caveman. Because of this movie. Because of this movie. Maybe, yeah, yeah. Like, he is so coherent and funny in some of the other stuff he's done, like, recently. Yeah. But, like, people think of this as Channing Tatum. You know what? If I had seen this first, I probably wouldn't have given him a chance no. later on. But I didn't really get into anything he had done until, like, the 21 Jump Street movies. Yeah. Which were very Which funny. he's hilarious yeah. in. 
But yeah, this this is not a good showing of what Channing Tatum can do. Well, maybe dance wise. Oh yeah, he's a pro. Is the dancing good in this? Yeah, it's it's good. I mean, so there's lots of dance movies where they don't get actual dancers, mm. and it looks like all the background people are dancers. To me, who knows not much about mm-hmm. dance, nothing looked very impressive to me. Well, no. we've watched cheerleader movies or dance movies that you've gotten to me what gotten me to watch in the past, where even if I don't understand all the intricacies, I'm impressed. I was yes. like, wow, that looks amazing. This, this one, not so much. Very baseline. Like they're not doing anything super crazy, mm-hmm. but they look like trained dancers. But the woman playing Nora is like that's her job. She's yeah, a she's choreographer a and dancer. So you'd think she'd kind of uh, bust it out a little more. Yeah. I Crank it up a notch. I don't know if maybe the director was like, oh, you guys are still in school, so maybe like... Tone it down? Tone it down? I don't think they would do that. I don't know. It's not like in a musical, they're like, hey, don't sing your best because you're young. <laughs> I think for what it was, the dance was good. It was very good. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was impressed that opening sequence uh, when they go back and forth from like the street dancers to the ballet. That looks they good, were... but that's nobody in the movie. No, they were real dancers. Because my pet peeve is when you get people being ballerinas in a movie who are on point shoots who have clearly never done point. And it's so annoying to me because generally you do like eight to ten years of ballet and then start point and then you look like Bambi for like a year. But I don't give them credit for that because that's not part of the movie. No. That's B-roll that plays over the credits. But I appreciate... The people in the movie don't impress me. That's like them watching a movie of Fred Astaire and going, oh yeah, Fred Astaire was in this, so it's great. Like, no, he's not in the movie. Yeah. I mean, I just appreciate it from a dance standpoint that they put actual dancers. But the rest of the people you think are good. I thought they were good, yeah. I thought they did good work Hmm. for what they were doing. Yeah, what were they doing? I don't know, because it was like modern dance, like jazz. I don't know. But she also teaches ballet class. Like she does all sorts of dance. Right. And I feel like she needs to pick one style. And we get some insight into Nora's life when we meet her mom. And uh, we see how dire it is at home. Because if she doesn't do well in this senior recital and get a job based on this immediately after she graduates... Her mom's going to make her go to Cornell. Ugh. Or Brown. Oh, my God. What a hard life she lives. Yeah. Get an Ivy League education, <laughs> Missy. Which, uh, from her mom, seems like the most reasonable thing. Of like, hey, uh, yeah, you're in this dance school. Great. But if you can't get a job dancing going forward, you should go to university. I'm going to pay for everything. She also That seems like say, a great like, option. You have to be an accountant. No, I'm sure you could take dance classes at Cornell. I'm sure Cornell and Brown both have great dance faculties. You could be like a MFA. Yeah, like and and get some education while you're doing it. Yeah, I, yeah, this mom is totally reasonable. Yeah, and she's not saying drop out now. No, she's and saying she's... if you can't get a job, you should get an education. Yeah, fair. And she never says you can never dance again. Yeah. It's not get a job or never dance again. But her dad died, and her dad's the one who took her to dance class. Therefore, the mom is bad. (laughs) I guess. The mom is just looking out for her. I'd take a Cornell education. Yeah, no kidding. It'll be fine. Nora also has some of the worst hair and makeup I have ever seen on a lead in a movie. Yeah, and it's not like she's doesn't look good no it's like the people doing her hair and makeup and outfits i would argue did not like her no she pissed somebody off yeah like jenna dewan is a very pretty woman like she's very very good looking and she like knows how to style herself and stuff and she's like very well put together when you see her like on red carpets and stuff and in this she looks like she i don't know crawled through a dumpster to get to school oh maybe she did (laughs) it's just this like weird mixture of like really swoopy bangs that are cut irregularly and like too many layers in her hair and then some of her outfits look like ghillie suits like she's doing camouflage in a swamp (laughs) Yeah, she's got too many layers on. This is so 2006 is the time when you did lots of layers 
apparently in women's fashion and like, men's just shirts on shirts on shirts, shirts. On shirts and pants on pants and so she's like someone in the wardrobe department was like i've seen what dancers wear and i will admit as a dancer like for warm-up you have a lot of clothes on because you're slowly getting warm and you slowly take off your clothes throughout warm up and then you're in your leotard and tights. But she seems to mix like weird street clothes with her dance stuff so that she's wearing like tights, leggings, shorts, a tank top, a sweater, and then some sort of cardigan. And yet with all of that, one pair of Channing Tatum's pants has more fabric than, than all her, her entire outfit. Pants. Yeah. Um, He's wearing a boat sail, I believe. <laughs> Just like kind of strategically wrapped around his body. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, like I don't know who she pissed off, but yikes. Her friend, her best friend, Lucy, is way better dressed than she is. Lucy, that's her name. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and then there's a side story about Lucy, who is uh, Nora's friend so. and a dancer and also a singer. Yeah. Sometimes when the plot calls for it. Yeah. And who does Mario play? Um, What's that guy's name? Miles? Miles. Miles, who is played by Mario. Did you? Are you familiar with Mario outside of this movie? No, I'm not. No, he's an R&B singer. He was like, at this time... I knew who Mario was, but I didn't know about this movie. Oh, yeah. okay. And Heavy D's in this as well. Oh, who's Heavy D? Who's Heavy D? Heavy D and the boys? I, I don't know who him or the boys are. Oh, uh, Heavy D is a late 80s, early 90s rapper. Okay. And and, and other things as well. Uh, he plays, I believe his name's Omar in this. And when they said, we're taking this car, because they steal cars, we're taking right. it to Omar, I got excited because this takes place in Baltimore, and this was, I think, concurrent to when The Wire was recorded. Oh. And there are a couple of actors in this that were also in The Wire because it's like a, it's a Baltimore show. They would have been around. So yeah. I thought it was going to be Omar from The Wire, but it, it was oh. not. It was Heavy D, so that's also fun. That's fun, though. But if it were Omar, that would have been the best. Uh, but Mario uh, Miles has a crush on Lucy and is trying to get with her, but she likes this older British singer. Pop star? Yeah, but pop star who plays to clubs of like 25 people. Uh, 25 under 18 people. <laughs> yeah. And Nora also has a boyfriend who is like a, just a douchebag guy who's trying to be, I don't know, like Justin Timberlake-esque. Yeah, he's got like a, a heavy like R&B background almost, like background music, but he sings very pop in a shitty way yeah and he only wears outfits where there are stripes along his sleeves yeah he so does sometimes wear a lot of stripes it's a sweater sometimes it's a motorcycle jacket but he loves those stripes those down the sleeves straight down the sleeves and he is thinks he's at his coolest yeah and we can tell he's a dick because he's with nora and we want channing tatum to be with nora yes and he, one day he shows up late and misses the whole uh, rehearsal time and she's mad at him. So he just says, fine, I'm just never going to do this again. Which also you legally can't. You're court ordered to be there. Yeah. And he's like, w why do I have to be on time? Because he was playing basketball or stealing cars. One of the two. <laughs> Those are his other two hobbies. Yeah. So yeah, one of the two. But to make it up to her, he eventually says he's going to go back. I forget what changes in him to make him reconsider things. Either way, he decides to go back. I think something in his own life makes him realize that he should uh, put some effort into things yeah. for once because he doesn't try and people are always saying, like, you never finish anything. Also, it could just be that uh, he legally has to. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the court has mandated you to be there. And to win her over, he said, fine, I'll do anything. And what she gets him to do is take ballet classes where she's teaching like a bunch of six-year-old girls. And there's a very stern little six-year-old in that. Oh, I love that part. And she's always shushing him. Yeah. That's what I liked. I wanted more fun things like that. That was funny. That's the montage I was looking for. And then they have their sexy sunset dance on the docks because she's like, this is where I come to plan things. I have really imagined this piece being with like 20 people. And he's like, well, why don't you do that? And she's like, oh, I could never because I don't know. No real reason. actually. Yeah. Do you remember the club scene? Oh, yeah, we're getting there. So yeah. I think that happens pretty much next. They go to see Lucy's boyfriend in concert. Yeah. Um, it's like a hotel ballroom. Yeah. 
and no bar there's no like seating just a area. stage yeah it's literally just people standing on a dance floor and on the stage, he has a bunch of people holding instruments. There's an entire brass section. Yeah. But then no one plays the instruments. No, they, they just, just stand like stand around. around behind him and dance. And then everyone in the audience does a choreographed dance. <gasps> yes. So my question to you is, have they all planned this? And everyone there knows this dance? Like perhaps they're all kids from the school and they're all like, oh yeah, this is a dance we do at school all the time. Yeah, or like, oh, this was last year's showcase group dance, so yeah. let's do it. That seems unlikely. It does seem unlikely. But if they just break into this dance, then is this more like a musical? Because like in a musical, you can just break into song whenever and it's all right because that's what happens in the world of a musical. Yes. But this is the only time this happens yeah. here. Yeah. I assume it's something from school. And everyone in the audience goes to school with him? I assume so. You'd think there'd be someone else to see this, because the, the singer doesn't go to school there, nor do any of the performers. Yeah. I, I don't know. I guess I just kind of assume that they all went to school together and that this was, like, just something that they did or okay. that they, would like, worked up together. So there's this 20-something British singer and... With a giant band, but the only people who buy tickets to see him all go to the same high school. I guess so. And then we see that uh, this older British boyfriend that Lucy says is so sophisticated is cheating on him. Yeah. And Miles sees and says, like, you deserve better. And she's like, you know how singers are. Yeah, he's a pop star. Oh, and also we kind of forgot that the douchey boyfriend of... Nora also dropped Miles when he got signed yeah. because Miles was his producer and then Nora breaks up with him. And that's why Nora breaks up with him. Yeah, because apparently he told uh, Miles that the, that he was the only one with talent. Yeah. That was that was what the producers thought, that he was the only one with talent and so they didn't need him. Um, so Nora breaks up with him and then uh, she and Tyler get sexy at the club. Yeah, and then they kiss. I think it's there. I think that's their first kiss, yeah. And uh, then they're all, like, best friends. Yeah. And they're in a relationship. Yeah, and then the next morning when Channing Tatum wakes up, his little sister is sitting on the foot of his bed like she often is. Yeah. Which is weird. Eating cereal. But this time she has a full liter of orange oh, juice for him. Right. Here you go. And he just drinks a liter of orange juice. <laughs> that was a lot of orange juice. And then we find out, oh, that the sister also a great dancer. Yeah. Like, who is this family? And they're not even related. No. Like biologically, and then the little brother comes and he can also dance, and he's like four or something. Yeah, like what is this foster care dance club that they all belong to? Yeah. Well, I think we learn in a lot of movies that all foster kids are incredibly talented. Right. With I've Annie. never seen, uh, yeah, right? <laughs> Every foster kid has some secret talents, and they are going to use those talents to, uh, to do some amazing things so all the foster kids are super talented and can dance really really well just like without classes that we can see and this scene channing tatum is charming yes why can't we see more of this he's and... so sweet to his like foster brother and sister and they're having fun and yeah. they're playing nobody has fun dancing in this movie no dancing is work and you're yeah. not gonna enjoy it because it's work and i i get that that's the theme of of the people at the school that you don't take it seriously we take this seriously it's our lives so that should have been the thing that channing tatum brings to it yes although he does learn from them to take things more seriously i felt nora should have learned the lesson of like i need to loosen up i need to try new things yeah. which i don't think we get do no. we no she she kind of like opens up to the fact that Channing Tatum dances differently than she does because she's like so rigid and does her like modern dance and her ballet. But does she and, change like, her dance or just she, lets him dance alongside her? I think kind of relaxes into it a little bit, but I think she's mostly just doing her style of dance. Okay. But allows Channing Tatum to dance next to her in but his to style. to someone who can't see the nuance in her slightly changing her dance forms... Like, that part of her taking on some of his characteristics yeah. is lost on me. Okay. That needed to be, like, in the script or something in her life. That of, happened. Yeah. yeah. Where he, like, like in, uh, was it Save the Last Dance? 
where like Julia Stiles is trying to be more hip hop. Yeah, and they, and make they a have point, that cute, and they have a montage yeah, the of them montage. both teaching each other. It's not the case in this movie. Yeah, like she does that funny little like she's trying to sit in a chair and she's trying to be like yeah, this not is all very prim and proper. To watch. Yeah. But it still it spoke to the fact that they were trying out each other's styles of yes. dance. And that's what that movie was about. It yeah. was a very problematic movie. We did an it episode on it. Go watch it. Listen to it. But I get that idea. And when we were talking about what we thought this movie would be, we thought they would both learn from each other. Yeah, like a mixing of styles. That's not the case. No. He learns from her to take things seriously sometimes. Yeah. That is it. She learns. I don't believe she learns. She learns how to re-choreograph something 17 times. But then uh, back to where we were talking about it's all fun times and we get a fun time montage, which yeah. is one of the best parts of the movie. Yeah. But because I was enjoying that, I think I said to you like, oh, something bad's going to yeah. happen now. Yeah, it has to because they were having like a little love sequence where they danced and kissed and giggled and had a good time. And I knew that something bad would have to happen between the two of them. Yeah. And something bigger bad was going to happen. And I did, in fact, think like, oh, man, something's going to happen to Skinny. Yeah. Now his friends, Mac and Skinny, find out that he's been dancing. And they act like they were married and he just cheated on them? Yeah. Like, how dare you be doing this? And This is like a classic Archie conundrum of like, you can either play basketball and be friends with me or you can dance it's only one or the other. That's it. <laughs> there is nothing else. But he, to be fair, Channing Tatum does keep saying like, oh yeah, I'll be there tomorrow. He knows that he will not be there any day. It's true. And also- Why does he keep like, saying I'll be there tomorrow? I have 200 hours of community service to do that I'm doing two hours at a time. I'm going to be busy for a while. Yeah. Like two and a half hours a day he's doing community. You'd think that he could stay a little later. Well, now he's just doing dance stuff though, so- she True. doesn't want to dance all day. She's been dancing all day at school. True. Okay. His friend is like a, yeah, like a cheated, jilted wife. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, how dare you? It's just that manufactured conflict that has to happen in every rom-com or dance movie where they don't really have much of a plot. They're just yeah. following those beats that we just need like, oh, they need to be angry at each other now. So now they're angry. There's some friction. No real reason. Yeah. So now... um, Andrew, the original partner, says like, hey, my ankle is back better just like we all knew it would be. Yeah. And I'm here. And Tyler like freaks the fuck out. It's like you used me. Yeah. You used me just to be your partner. And she's like. That's literally what it was. I needed a partner until Andrew got back. (laughs) We told you that. And you tried to get that point across to the principal. That, by yeah, that lady you, from Six Feet Under, who backed, was terrible at You this. backed me up. Yeah. He said, like, yeah, let me fill in and help you. But now he doesn't have his dance life and his friends won't talk to him, so he can't play basketball <laughs> or steal cars. When did he ever actually play basketball, though? There's one scene, and then there's two times when they're just coming back from basketball and they're counting money because they win money at basketball. Okay, okay. I just felt like he was constantly going, yeah, yeah, basketball tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. tomorrow. I guess after he starts dancing, he starts going. But he plays basketball also in giant pants. Like, how do you keep your clothes on running and jumping like that when they are that large? I feel like you jump right out of your pants. Yeah, but if you do jump in them, you come down real slow. Yeah, it's a nice tapered landing. Good for the knees. parachute. (laughs) And I think here we actually see him go to school in this montage of him being sad. Sad guys go to school. (laughs) And then Andrew, the dance partner, is like not doing well and says to Nora, like, we both know I can't do this. (laughs) If you knew that, then why'd you come here? (laughs) And also, like, he doesn't do like a tapered return where he tries out, you know, a few classes and does some steps with Nora of the dance to see if he could do it. He's just like, I'm back. It's me. Bye, other guy. And they're like, just full on dancing, which no wonder he hurt himself again. Yeah. You can't just like go back after a sprained ankle. And then uh, Mac is at this party and talking to Heavy D and says like oh he's one of those art school guys now and he's like what do you know about art school cats what's an art school cat look like 
Aang is, is like Tupac, and I kind of liked that scene because yeah. that was Mac had this idea that you are not one of us, and you're leaving our like culture. Yeah, yeah. You were uh, one of us, and we brought you into this family, and now you're leaving us for something better. I think that was kind of Mac's thing. The script didn't really do that justice. Yeah. But I think that could be there. Yeah, for sure. And I liked that little scene where they he named a bunch of like black artists. Like yeah, Tupac was an art school guy. If you ever uh, watch any documentaries on like Tupac's life before he was like Tupac with a two. Right. Very interesting stuff back when he was MC New York. Oh. He was like Mr. West Coast, but his first rap name was MC New York. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, Nas also was an art school guy, but you know me, I don't like Nas because I was on Tupac's side of all of that. Right, so. right, right. <laughs> Team Tupac over here. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so then they get to be friends again. There's a party that the mom says, Skinny, you can't go to the party. and Which, fair. Skinny is in like grade 10. Yeah. Really, none of them should be going if to the party. If the brothers, like if the brother and Tyler are in grade 12, Skinny has to be in like grade 9 or grade 10. Well, if they're in grade 12, then he would be in like grade 6. But I think <laughs> he actually looks like a like grade 10 Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that's when I said to you, like, oh, something's happening yeah. to Skinny. He's going to go and he's going to get beaten up. And Skinny... I did not think he would just straight up get murdered, though. Yeah. I kind of thought that was what was going to happen. But based on how the rest of this movie goes, like the stakes of this movie. It got real dark. I did not think it would go that far. It got really dark really quickly. It just like straight goes from like save the last dance style stakes to menace to society in like 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. And he gets shot because he steals this Escalade from these guys. And then he, well, they also, whenever they steal a card, they like dance on it and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's you're not helping your cause there. No. So he's like honking in his stolen Escalade, like, "Hey, everyone, look at this Escalade I stole!" And then the people who he stole it from come back and uh, and kill him and shoot him because he stole like the bad guy's car. Yeah, and if they there's do like a, a villain in this neighborhood, it's yeah. this guy who owns the Escalade, and they were already scared of him. Yeah, and he's the guy who pulls the gun on Tyler at the beginning. Oh, I didn't even know that was him too. Yeah. So Don't. Skinny's a fucking idiot. He's an idiot because yeah. he steals like the master villain's car. Yeah. And, and then takes it to a party and is honking the horn. Yeah, where I'm sure his guys already are. Yeah. And so, yeah, he then gets out of the car. And as Mac and Tyler are trying to get out of the party to Skinny, he is shot. Yeah. And then they do like full on holding him in his arms yeah. and sobbing. Like, it was yeah, such a different movie in that moment. Yeah. I, I did not think it would go there. And then after Skinny dies, Max says, like, oh, I want to be better. We can do better. And we don't see any of that from Mac. I'm trying not to analyze this movie very much, but, like, <laughs> it's another one where this black kid dies just so a white kid can be like, oh, okay, I'm going to go to dance school now. Yeah. And do we see any of that from Mac? No. No. So it's just to show you that, like, yeah, the black people are going to get murdered in the streets and a white person can just be like, I'm going to go to school now. Can I have a scholarship? Even though I smashed up your school? Yeah, here you go. Yeah. Not the greatest lesson. No. <laughs> All right. So then we are at the night of the big performance. The and showcase. Of, I think we forgot to mention that uh, Tyler and Nora are not talking because when uh, the one dancer came back, Tyler freaked out and is yeah. not hasn't talked to her even though they were in a relationship as well. He's yeah. just not talked to her in I don't know a week, two yeah. weeks, a month. Who knows? Six months. I doubt six. <laughs> <laughs> but she also added, like when Tyler storms out, decides that she can do it as a solo with her backup dancers. Right, and she doesn't I think need a we partner. We forgot to mention that Tyler brought in twenty dancers who learned the dance real quick and from can do the, the school. Where were you on the audition day? Yeah, like these are the people who couldn't lift her in the air properly. But then are they all doing the same lifts? Yeah. Together. So maybe she was the problem. Oh, nobody likes to blame the star, but uh, sometimes it's their fault. Yeah. So they've been practicing this thing for weeks. They're ready to go. And then Tyler shows up. And Tyler's like, give me another chance. I need this in my life so I can go to school here for a month. And he's just in his large outfit. And uh, all of a sudden, it's time for them to go on stage. And Nora says, 
we're going back to the choreography with Tyler and everyone cheers. Yeah, like we've been working on this for so long. Yeah. And just in like 30 seconds, we have to go back to what we were doing weeks ago. Yeah, it's a lot of choreography changes. Yeah. So everyone cheers and Tyler just takes off his really large shirt and dances. Does he dance in his tank top? I think he has outfit changes. I think oh. he takes off his shirt on stage. So he has his tank top. No, he has. Or he puts his, on he a shirt. He starts in his tank top, <laughs> and then the boy dancers bring him two large shirts to put on midway yeah. through the whole performance. Because he needs those giant shirts. He needs so many shirts. That's why they call him Two Shirts Tatum. Oh, that's why. That's why. Um, and they execute this dance flawlessly even though there's been no time to warm up no time to run any of the like lifts or anything with him and uh everyone just seems to remember choreography from weeks ago yeah was this a good dance no it didn't impress me it but then i don't know what going to on in it like yes. it didn't seem cohesive like a dance like usually yeah, yeah i would agree with like that. G- at least just coming from like a cheer point of view there's like sections and people in groups that work together for like one big large group picture it seemed less united than when people spontaneously broke into dance at that one yes so none of the parts are like the factions of this dance like there's like the girl group and there's the boy group and then there's the partners and then there's everyone dancing together in like one big group but none of them seem to make any sense or be doing the same kind of dance or that it fit with the music at all it kind of just seemed like when he first comes to that school and he's walking through the halls and everyone is like look i can do this dance look i can play a violin it's just people showing off what they can do where each one of them you're like okay that's cool it's like a dance circle in a club yeah yeah but like 20 people yes all at once oh and also we forgot to mention that there is a full orchestra now yes and um, what's his name? Miles is a conductor slash DJ. Yeah, every time he's playing something, it's usually just a an MP3. They say sometimes, <laughs> and but first he has to start playing the beat on on like his pad there, and he has to play that first, yeah. and then he just presses a play button, and then the rest of the song goes. But in this one, he starts on the pad, and then he takes out a baton and starts conducting. Yeah, and then just starts like pointing at people to start playing. Yeah. And it's like, I don't think that's conducting either. But also, if this is like a choreographed routine with live music, great. But they would have already rehearsed. So I feel like the pointing isn't necessary. (laughs) I feel like these people know the piece of music. And then everyone loves the dance. It's the best ever. And then someone from a company says, hey, Nora, you were great. You have a job with my company as soon as you graduate. Yeah, like... That's it. It's that easy. Let's just hand out jobs. Yeah, you have a job. And uh, hey, Channing Tatum, there is maybe a month left in school because this is their big final project. I assume it's like March or April right now. And the principal lady, who was, I thought, very, very bad in this Mm -hmm. movie, says, yeah, you can go to school in here. I'll see you Monday. <laughs> it's yeah. that easy to go to school there. Also, she talks about how expensive tuition is. So, like, how is Channing Tatum paying for this? Also, schools like this that are, like, schools of the arts that have scholarships, those scholarships are given out in, like, May the year before. So they probably have no scholarship money left until next year. And if you are going to a performing arts school the day after their big final projects... What, what are you going to learn? Yeah. Do the kids there learn math? I assume so, but... You don't get to see any of that. No. Yeah, so I guess he gets a couple of weeks at a new school, which uh, he probably will be way behind everyone in everything. But man, what a prestigious diploma to get then. Yeah, for not doing any of the no big projects. No arts, no... Like, he's not taking any real classes because he's got, like, a month or two. We'll say two months left. He's not, yeah, he's not doing any of the final project stuff. He's not, like, he hasn't done, like, even a full year of dance training. So he gets this great diploma that looks great on a transcript, but doesn't actually have any of the classes to back it up. He's going to have to take final exams in something that people have been doing for three years already. I don't know how he made it that far with all of the jobs he had. Yeah. He's a busy guy. Very, very busy. 
And then what? They kiss in the end? Is that how it is? Yeah. Yeah, we get that big kiss and everyone's just like standing around in the back. Like, were they the only dance of the day? Because it's like the show is starting, places in five minutes, and then they dance, and then everyone just comes backstage and like congratulates them. And gives was everyone chops. there for like five minutes? <laughs> for, like one dance. <laughs> they filled the entire auditorium and said everything. I just up. thought maybe they were the last ones, but okay. But the the beginning like the places call sounded like the show was about to start, hmm. and they were seating people. Were they? Well, <laughs> Channing in Tatum movie runs sense. in, and there's like an usher, like ushing people. Yeah, he just ushed them right in there. <laughs> so, like, I assume this was the beginning of the show and the end of the show. It's not a great it's show. It's very strange. I don't know. <laughs> so, yes, there's the big epic kiss at the end, and then you assume that they date Get forever. Married and now divorced. And now divorced. They do actually. But, uh, yeah, I I don't know. I didn't feel like they had an especially large amount of chemistry. No, not at all. For people who were actually in love, they didn't seem like No. It. But he just didn't seem like he had any interests in anything ever. No. He was like that generic, big, dumb teenage boy. Yeah. Who's just like, I don't know, whatever. And like, what did you do at school today? Nothing. Like, yeah. that's that's like... Channing Tatum's character. <laughs> but she wasn't especially charismatic no, either. No, and she's like stressed out about dance, which like fair because that's what you want to do as a living. But I also didn't feel like she liked anybody she was friends with or cared about dance unless someone was like challenging her on it. Mm-hmm. I liked Mario as yeah. Miles. I think he was a likable character. Miles was good, and he kind of was that crossover between the dance school world and Tyler's world because he came to a party with him. Yeah, and I like the first time Channing Tatum sees him, he was like, "Oh, you're black. Where are you from? Oh, yeah, my friend's from there. Let's be friends." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then they're best friends. <laughs> That's like the only time Tyler goes out of his way to make friends. Mm -hmm. That was like I liked Mario. Um, he was very likable, he wasn't stereotypical, and he uh, kind of, like, helped move the plot along. Remember when he goes to a big, giant concert, and they're like, hey, why don't you come jam with us yeah. on your laptop? And then he just plugs in and takes over, I guess, all of the music, and he just knows the music and does it on the fly, and then everyone else knows it as well. And then uh, Nora's best friend is like... I uh, know this song. So I just, and she just starts singing. Yeah. And like, but he's making it up. And like, belting. So, like, what are you singing? One, because this is a new song that he's never done before. And like, how did you know this was the song that he was going to do? And it's just a bunch of musicians making things up on the go, it's except like, for like all of those people that are just not playing their instruments. Yeah. Just the brass, just like, just like holding their instruments, yeah. looking cool, nodding their heads. They kind of just like bop along in the back. Yeah, that's all you need to do. That's all you need to do. Well, would you uh, recommend Save the Last Dance? No, what's this one called? Step It Up. <laughs> Step Up. Step Up. <laughs> um, I'd recommend it. I think it was fun. I think it doesn't take itself seriously. Or you shouldn't take it seriously. It no. takes itself pretty seriously. Yeah. But you should not take it seriously um, and just like gear up for like a fun ride. Don't overanalyze it. Don't analyze it. Don't n just leave. Don't your, think. Leave your analyzing in another room. Leave your brain in another room. Because <laughs> you can have fun with this movie. Oh, yeah. It's we not did. poorly done. No. It's not good. No. I see the appeal. I like it. If you like dance movies, check it out. If you don't, there's probably better. There, there definitely are better dance movies out there. Oh yeah, yeah. but, but uh, it's not terrible. Yeah, check it it's out. just kind of bad. Just kind of bad. And you know what? Sometimes it's fun to watch a bad movie. Yeah, but it's not bad enough to be fun for that. Mm, okay. It's fun on the level of like you know exactly what's gonna happen, and Channing Tatum is oh well, he's funny bad. He's funny bad. Yeah. Yeah. But it's it's kind of enjoyable. Yeah. If you want to see Channing Tatum before he was like really famous. Before he grew into his looks. Oh, he did not grow into his looks for this movie. No. Which is it took sad. a couple years. I we we were like watching this and we were both like Channing Tatum's like actually handsome in real life, right? And then we realized that he hadn't grown into his face. Yeah. 
He's got really strong features and uh, has not come into them yet. Yeah, if you want to see Channing Tatum as like an awkward youth, watch this movie. So our second sponsor of the episode is Pod Power. With Pod Power, our sponsors are making it possible for us to amplify the voices of Albertans and Alberta podcasters. This episode, the Edmonton Community Foundation is helping us give a Pod Power shout out to Your Forest. Your Forest is a podcast about the natural world. You can hear stories about the environment, renewable resources, conservation, forestry, hunting, fishing, and more. This is a podcast for those who cannot live without the joys and wonders of all wild things. Find Your Forest wherever you get your podcasts or at yourforestpodcast.com. That's yourforestpodcast.com. All right. And we will see you back next week where we will each have a spoiler-free review for our things of the week. And then I'll let you know what will be our big watch for the week after that. I'm excited. Is today Valentine's Day when this comes out? I think it might be. This was your Valentine's Day pick. How do you how do you feel it holds up? Was it so romantic? It was uh, the most romantic romance movie ever. Okay, well, we will see you next week, everyone. Bye. Goodbye. Ugh. <laughs> I'm dumb. Just like that. Yeah, just like that.